Vim is a phenomenal text editor. For the most part, people who use it can all agree on that. And th even those who don't use it or don't enjoy using it can agree that it is very full-featured and can do a lot of stuff. I happen to love Vim. It's my favorite way to write ever. Since I switched to using Vim for all of my writing, I have a hard time going back to anything else. But there are a few things that just really, really bother me about Vim. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about five things that just kind of drive me nuts about Vim. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first one on the list is weird, okay? Now I understand that with key bindings and stuff, you can rebind all that stuff to make it however you want. But by default, the number zero goes to the beginning of the line. Makes sense, right? So you would think logically that one of the other numbers, I mean, you'd think one, but at least one of the other numbers would go to the end of the line, but that's not true. The dollar sign goes to the end of the line. Those things don't go together. <laughs> it just makes no sense. Now, I'm sure that there's some person out there that knows the reason why this is the case. Probably something to do with a terminal somewhere and just the way keyboards used to be laid out or some such nonsense. But in this day and age, that's dumb. I can't stand it. Now, I always mean to go through and rebind that so that it actually makes sense to my brain, but I have never done it. Eventually, I will. Probably, but the fact that that by default is the way it is zero to the beginning line dollar sign to the end makes absolutely no sense It just drives me nuts on a similar note. Let's just talk a little bit about HJKL shall we now? I understand the history behind HJKL and why it is that way I can understand it and I understand why it doesn't change but all that being said and despite my understanding of it it still drives me nuts because that's not where your fingers are supposed to rest. Your fingers are supposed to rest on JKL semicolon. That's the way it's supposed to be when you're touch typing. I don't really touch type, so it's not that big of a deal. And I've gotten used to HJKL, so I wouldn't want to change it now, which is the reason why it hasn't been changed, but it still seems a little weird. And like I said, I understand why it is the way it is. It's still just... When I first started using them, before I turned off the arrow keys working it was just it seemed so weird to me that those were the four letters that they chose and if it, it, it feels like i've shifted my hand over even though i don't touch type as well as i should it still feels like i've shifted my hand over a little bit despite the fact that i shouldn't if that makes sense okay so the next one is probably just a me thing there's a couple of these on this list that are just kind of a me problem but every once in a while Actually, more than every once in a while, I get errors uh, that are basically backup errors where Vim has made backups of certain things and they won't let you write any changes to the file you're editing because there's a backup that's newer. This is a weird thing to happen, right? It shouldn't happen. And I think this is more of a Linux problem, something to do with the way things are updated, but I'm not actually sure what's going on. I just know that I get these errors quite often, especially now that I'm writing more in Vim. For whatever reason, the backup errors just drive me nuts. And you can turn off, I believe you can turn off like automatic backup, but you don't actually want to do that. It like disables the, the time travel functionality or something. I don't even know. But the errors, like I said, drive me nuts. Now, the next one is both a good thing and a bad thing. So I know a lot of people who don't like Vim plugins. They, they don't use them at all. They or they write their own or they integrate all the plugin functionality right into Vim and don't deal with plugins at all. They don't have a plugin manager, any of that stuff. I know a lot of people like that and that's fine. That's good for them. And it's it probably is good for them. You know, it's probably allows them to expand their horizons and be better citizens of Vim world. But for me, I like plugins. Like I like having some plugins and Frankly, I probably couldn't use Vim without plugins. Like, there's several plugins that I just absolutely have to have. If I didn't have Goyo, I probably wouldn't write in Vim. I just probably wouldn't. So, I do need plugins. But that being said, my plugins file is a little bit of a mess. And it's bloated. We're just I'm just going to be... I'll be very frank. I don't like the word bloat. I always say bloat is bloat because it's just so overused. But in this case, plugins have a tendency to 
pile up on one another. So you go through and you try on a new one, you never uninstall it, it stays there forever. It's kind of like package bloat when you use Arch Linux or any Linux distro really, where you install something, never use it, it just stays on your system forever until you nuke and pave. Same thing happens with Vim, only difference is I take my Vim config everywhere, so uh, though I never clean out that file. Now again, like I said before, this is more of a me problem, but I have a feeling that a lot of people do this. Like they install a plugin they want to try, uh, they put it in their VimRC file, uh, they install it, and it just stays there forever, even if they don't use it. So that's what I call plugin bloat. It happens, I think, to a lot of people, and it happens to me a lot because I have there's like probably seven or eight plugins in my and NeoVim config that could just go away. I'd never use them. Uh, some of them are for like coding or whatever, like uh, that I don't do, and I could get rid of those, but I don't because I mean lazy person here. But so that's another thing that kind of drives me nuts that is much more of a me problem than a Vim problem, but that's probably the case with most of these. Okay, so the next one is another thing that I'm having problems with now that I've switched to Vim full-time for writing, and that is auto-folding. Now, I've talked to several people, I've done some Googling on this, and I haven't been able to f solve it. Uh, no one seems to be able to give me a straight answer on why Vim does this. So, a lot of the times, the articles that I either edit or I'm writing are well over 20,000 words. Uh, sometimes they're even more than that. I, I edited one the other day, it was 75,000 words. So the documents I'm talking about here are really, really long. And for whatever reason, when I convert something from another format, so I say that I convert it from docx to, to markdown, which is a process you can do through pandoc. It's kind of a convoluted process because you can't go directly from like ODT to at markdown. You have to go from ODT to HTML to Markdown, so it's a little bit of a convoluted process, but it can be done. The problem is once you open up that Markdown file, and if it's really large, you get to like line 2300 or so, and Vim decides that they're going to start folding stuff. Now, if you've never encountered a Vim fold, you probably don't even know what this looks like, because it's very rare. I would say the vast majority of people don't actually use Vim folds. I mean, probably the nerdiest of Vim users use Vim folders, folds, but most people don't. I had no clue that Vim even had this functionality until I came across the Kitty uh, configuration file. Kitty is a terminal emulator and they have a very long configuration file and it comes pre-folded. So if you don't know how to unfold something in Vim, you're, you're out of luck. And I had actually had to look it up because I had no clue. I didn't know what time it was. I, I opened it up and was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, well, I don't know how to do this. It was silly. The point is, is with these long documents, Vim, for whatever reason, seems to auto-fold. Now, again, this seems to be just a me problem. I've talked to some people on the Discord server, and they don't have this problem with other long documents at all. Maybe it has something to do with Markdown. I don't know. But whatever it is, it drives me nuts because I get to that certain point, and I have to remember how to go through and unfold something. And the problem with Vim is that there seems to be something you have to set in your VimRC folder or your VimRC file in order to actually have the process to unfold to even work. I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong, which I'm, I'm probably am just doing something wrong, but the fact that this happens at all, and the reason why I paused there was because my screen decided to go to sleep because I'm apparently that's something that Plasma decides it needs to do. Anyways, the, the, the point is, is that the fact that it does this drives me absolutely nuts because like I said, I have to figure out how to unfold it again because I don't use fold at all, so I don't ever remember this. And then I still have to deal with, you know, continuing on with my work. It's just a kind of a pain in the ass. So Again, that, another one of those things is just kind of a me problem, but I don't know if this happens for other people as well. So the last one on the list, and this may actually have been uh, been six things on the list instead of five, but it doesn't matter. The, 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 the last thing is theming. Now, everybody knows that has watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I like to theme things. I like to rice my window manager. I like to theme KDE. I like to go through and theme them. And I don't think that this is something that's odd. Everybody has their theme that they use for VS Code or Atom or Vim or whatever. Everybody kind of has that kind of thing. And I do this often. I like to have my Vim match the theme that I have for my window manager or whatever. The problem is, is that the way Vim does theming is really weird. There is several different ways of this, of using syntax to theme Vim. And there's no consistent way of doing it. You either choose one way of doing it, another way of doing it, another way of doing it, or you add a plugin. And 
it's just really weird and it makes it hard to come up with your own theme now there are tools out there that allow you to create your own vim theme that's cool but if you wanted to create a vim theme from scratch and i've tried this trying to do so is kind of hard because there are, first of all there's not very many tutorials out there on how to do it second of all the ones that are out there I'll tell you a different way of doing it because there are several different ways of doing it. There's different uh, ways of choosing what variables to assign to different colors. The variables' names change. It's I don't even know if they're called variables, but whatever. The, the, the component parts change, and it makes it really hard to go through and actually go through and do your own Vim theme. And it's, like I said, that's not a big deal because there are tools and there's a, just a ton of plugins, but... That goes back to the whole plugin bloat, bloat thing. If you take a look at my NVIM config file, about half the plugins there are actually commented out. They're old themes that I used before that I, you know, might go back to. And the fact that I have to keep those in there because it's not easy to change themes without a plugin is kind of annoying. So, like I said, that's probably the, out of all the rest of them, that's the, the least worrisome. Like, it doesn't matter all that much. It's not hard to. Uh, enable on un un unenable or reinstall a plugin it's still just something that always kind of gets me because i'd love to actually be able to look, sit down and create my own thing without having to use a tool and like i said it can be done it's just confusing as all get out so uh, that is it for this video if you have things that annoy you about them leave those in the comment section below and i just want to put this out there because i know that there's going to be at least five people out there that says well matt why don't you just use emacs and my response to that is, I did for, I don't know, a week, two weeks, something like that. I don't even remember. I used Emacs. I didn't like it. So, that's the reason why I don't use Emacs. I don't like it. I like Vim. Now, I know this whole video was negative about Vim. You can be negative about something and still love it. Like, I adore Vim. I would, I, I like I said be, or at the beginning of the video... I can't foresee myself ever leaving them, and I have a hard time now when I have to go to like use Google Docs for work. Every time I have to go do that, I find myself using the Vim keys even more than I did before I switched to Vim full time, and I did that all the time then. So it's a mess. <laughs> my 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 brain is a mess. It does not realize that Vim keys aren't universal, even though they probably should be. So. That's the reason why I always use, use Emacs, and that's why I like Vim. And just because I'm I, I'm negative on Vim in some cases doesn't mean I hate Vim all of a sudden or something. You know, whatever. Anyways, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, East Coast Web, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackknife Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy, Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, Peter A, Crucible, and Dark Bandit 6. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.